Hello Scatterbranchers and welcome to a new episode. In this episode we return to graphics card overclocking with the Galax GTX 1070 Hall of Fame Limited Edition. Now this card has a massive cooler and a beefed up PCB which is supposed to help getting higher overclocks. As you already noticed, the studio looks a little bit different than in the previous videos. And the main reason for that is that Tim is not here and I sort of had to improvise. Sorry about that. Anyway, we'll be looking at this card here and we're running it through a variety of 3D Mark tests. We, we start at Time Spy, which is DirectX 12. Then we move down to Fire Strike, which is DirectX 11. Then we run Cloud Gate, which is DirectX 10. And then finally, we'll have an Ice Storm test in included as well, which is DirectX 9. At the very end of the video, we'll show you the performance gains uh, from this card pre-overclocked compared to the Founders Edition, and then this card manually overclocked to the Founders Edition uh, as well. The main part of the video, however, we'll spend on showing you how we do the actual overclocking, show you the met methodology, right? The methodology is quite similar to the GT710, but nevertheless, you can always learn a bit more. First of all, we need to know what the approximate frequencies are for both the GPU and the memory of the graphics card. To do so, we'll use the same methodology as we used with the GT710. We'll use the GPU-Z render test as an initial workload to ramp up the frequencies until they are unstable. All right, let's show how to do this. Let's have a look at the system specifications. As said, we are running a 5200 MHz Core i7-7700K on an ROG Maximus 9 Apex motherboard. This is paired with a set of DDR4-4000 C16 G-Skill memory. Using Tech PowerUp's GPU-Z, we check the graphics card information. As you can see, under 3D load, the graphics cards boost up to 2000 MHz on the GPU. First off, we need a baseline score with the Galaxy GeForce GTX 1070 Hall of Fame at default settings. Well, at pre-overclocked settings. For your information, we'll let you see the entire benchmark this time in all its glory. For the next tests, we'll speed it up.
Our baseline score at 2000-2000 is 62-64 points with a graphic score of 6186 points. Let's also validate the score online so we are sure the run is valid and verified. On the 3dmark.com overview page, click reveal result to publish the score. Then click view benchmark run to see the details of your benchmark score. Now we have the option to submit to HWBot. If we click on submit result to HWBot, the benchmark score will be sent to HWBot and will be attached to your profile if you're logged in. On the HWBot submission page, simply fill out all the required information, agree to the benchmark rules and click submit benchmark result. On the submission page, we can find all sorts of information including our ranking in the GeForce GTX 1070 leaderboard for the 3 Mark Times Spy benchmark. We are currently ranked 41st in the leaderboard. Time to improve this. All right, after a reboot, we are back in the operating system. We open the Extreme Tuner Plus and GPU-Z. In GPU-Z, we open the render test, which will serve as our initial workload to test the overclocking capabilities. Then we open the sensor tab and set GPU core clock and GPU memory clock to show highest reading. As you can see, by default, the frequency is 2000 slash 2000 megahertz. First up is the GPU. We increase the GPU offset by plus 50 and see if the render test fails or not. After the initial step, we will go up by plus 25 increments. As you can see, the offset is not precisely 50 megahertz, but rather a step down as it is 37 megahertz. The render test is stable, so now we can move on up. We reached an offset of plus 175, which results in a GPU frequency of 2164 MHz. So far, everything still looks to be running quite stable. Our next step is plus 200, and we can see this immediately locks up the render test, and we even lose our signal at some point. A clear indication that the GPU is unstable at this frequency. We click default to reset our frequencies. Once this is done, we open GPU-Z again, load the render test and check if the clock frequencies are indeed returned to default. Now it's time to overclock the memory frequency. We will apply a similar methodology and increase in plus 50 offset increments. This will increase the actual memory frequency by steps of 25 megahertz. We reached an offset of plus 450, which results in a memory frequency of 2227 megahertz. So far, everything still looks to be running quite stable. Our next step is plus 550, and as we can see, this immediately locks up the render test. Again, we return to default frequencies to restore the standard settings. Let's reboot and see how far we can push our time spy benchmark score. For our test, we will increase the memory frequency and see the performance increase. Remember, our default score was 6264 points. Although we know the maximum stable frequency is plus 500 on the offset, we start conservatively at plus 400. Then we run TimeSpine to see the performance result. Our performance result is 6,222 points, almost 200 points higher. We check the result for validity at 3dmark.com and then push the result to HWL to enter the leaderboards. Here we find that we bump from 41st to 32nd place. Let's increase the frequency further. Our new score is 6,431 points, again a small increase from before. We check the result for validity at 3dmark.com and then push the result to HWBot to enter the leaderboards. Here we find that we bump from 32nd to 31st place. Let's increase it even further.
the final score at the maximum stable frequency from our render test workload is 6,461 points. Here, we find that we bumped from 31st to 30th place in the HW leaderboards after validating our result at 3dmark.com. Now it's time to push the GPU. All right, after a reboot, we are back in the operating system. For the GPU overclocking, we will add additional monitoring. We open GPU-Z and enable the sensor table. We set the GPU core clock and GPU temperature to display the maximum reading. This way, we know if the temperature was too high during the benchmark workload. Then we open Extreme Tuner Plus and start overclocking. Just like with the memory overclocking, we start off conservatively and set the offset three steps below our maximum overclock to plus 125. This results in a frequency of 2113 megahertz. Now we run the benchmark. After overclocking the GPU, our performance result is 6,455 points. This is higher than our default score of 62-64 points, but lower than the score we obtained by overclocking the memory frequency. After validating the results on 3dmark.com and pushing it to the HW leaderboards, we indeed see that this is not the best score we achieved with the GTX 1070. Let's increase it further. When starting the benchmark, we are immediately confronted with graphical glitches or artifacts. This is a clear indication of GPU instability. A couple moments later, the benchmark crashes and it's clear that we already found the maximum stable time spy frequency for our graphics card. Let's reboot and combine the GPU and memory overclock. All right, we're back in the operating system. So now we come to the final chapter of the overclocking adventure, combining the GPU and memory overclock. Knowing that they sometimes have an impact on each other, we start off by reducing the maximum stable time spy frequency for each component by one notch. So our initial overclock is plus 450 offset for the memory and plus 100 offset for the GPU. Don't forget to enable GPU-Z sensor monitoring to verify the in-benchmark clock frequencies. After all is set and done, we launch TimeSpy to see the performance increase. There we go, we improved our performance another 200 points and achieved a score of 6,617 marks. Again, we verified the validity of the benchmark score on 3dmark.com and uploaded it to our HWL profile. In the GTX 1070 times by leaderboards, we've now improved our position from 30th to 24th. Let's see if we can improve even further. After increasing the memory frequency to plus 500 offset, we notice the benchmark crashes 8 seconds into the second game test. Unstable! Let's try increasing the GPU frequency one step higher. After increasing the frequency to plus 125 offset, we see that the graphics card is unstable in the first game test after about 45 seconds. Again, no luck. We go back to try one more time and increase both the GPU and the memory frequency half a step over our previous stable settings. Fingers crossed. Great success! Our final test is stable and results in a performance increase of a couple of points. We are now at 6,648 marks. Let's make sure the score is valid and push it to the leaderboards. On HWBot, we are now ranked 22nd, one step below the glorious Belgian overclocker Massman. I'll get you next time. This concludes our overclocking adventure with the Galax GTX 1070 Hall of Fame Limited Edition. It's true what people say about the NVIDIA Pascal architecture. They're not that much fun to overclock with, mainly because these cards are already beast at pre-overclocked settings. However, if you want to do some manual overclocking, there's always some performance to gain. We ran this card through a variety of 3 d Mark benchmarks, and here are the results to share with you. 
The highest performance increase we saw over the Founders Edition version is 23% in Game Test 1 of Fire Strike Ultra. That's a DirectX 11 benchmark at 4K resolution. In older APIs like DirectX 9, we see very little difference in performance. In fact, only 1% overall in Ice Storm Extreme. We see a higher increase from overclocking the processor frequency, in fact, but the difference is negligible. If we have a look at the Tech Power Up GPU database comparing the 1070 graphics cards, we can find the Galax card quite close to the top with a base frequency of 1657 MHz and a memory frequency of 2002 MHz. Just to remind you, the base frequency of a Founders Edition GTX 1070 is 1.5 GHz on the GPU and 2 GHz on the memory. The Founders Edition boosts up to a maximum of 1683 MHz on the core. Interestingly enough, not a single graphics card on the market has a higher base frequency than the maximum boost of the Founders Edition graphics card. In a regular situation, the Galax GTX 1070 Hall of Fame Limited Edition boosts up to 2 GHz on the GPU. This is quite impressive for air cooling. In terms of memory frequency, there are a couple of cards that are a bit faster than the Galax Hall of Fame card, but not by much. That was it for this episode of Scatterbencher. Let us know in the comments if you have any questions or you want to share your experience overclocking your GTX 1070. We also dropped the link to all the hardware and software that we used in this video in the description below. Thanks for watching and until the next time.